Welcome to the Mind of Business Success Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Kramer. Our guest today is my friend, Elsa Johnson. She is a fellow coach, and I want to welcome you to the show, Elsa. I know this is going to be an incredible conversation. Well, I am so excited to be here. I can't wait to chat with you of all the things we love. We have a lot of similar uh, passions, interests, and expertise. So I know that this is going to be a valuable conversation. Before we get into some of like the nitty gritty of what I want to extract out of you to share with our listeners today, can you start by telling us a little bit about your business? Absolutely. So I like to work with high achievers, high performers who just feel like they're getting to a spot where they can't figure out why they're not getting what they want. They've always been can do, you know, I just pull myself up by the bootstrap and get myself going. And now it just doesn't seem to work right like that anymore. That is a common scenario for a lot of high performance business professionals. And I know that you have you have a background as an entrepreneur, as a business owner. Um, and I know that you've seen this not only in business owners, but in executives as well. Um, I'd love for you to share with us your insight as to why this happens. Well, first you have to understand the person itself. You know, being a high achiever in itself, there's absolutely, you know, that's awesome. It's awesome to be goal oriented, be able to get point from A to B to Z. Um, and the thing is that most people outside their circle, they are looking at them and saying, you know, how the heck do you, you know, create all this stuff that you have created, the success and everything that they look at it from the outside. But when you are a high achiever, you typically, a lot, a lot of what I see in a lot of my clients are, they have so enormous expectations on themselves you know, way more than anybody else has. And, and they don't feel they're fulfilling their full potential. So they are always running after that full potential. And sometimes they don't realize that by running so fast, they will, they actually more running away from it than running towards it. You just said something that I think a lot of people are going to resonate with. Um, my husband is not a coach. <laughs> and he calls me out on this a lot. And he has for years. It's like, you are too hard on yourself mm -hmm. because he saw me before, you know, before I ever embarked on my own personal development journey, we've been together over 18 years. So he saw me when I was the rough around the edges, no self-esteem, no self-confidence, no self-worth. And he watched me completely transform into a very, very different person and then embark on this whole like business journey and achieve a lot mm -hmm. in, you know, fairly short period of time, I would say, you know, certainly there's a lot more potential, but that again, that's that mindset where it's like, and, and I've seen this with my clients as well, right? You achieve by what other people's standards are incredible things. And you get there and it feels like it's not enough. It's not mm -hmm. enough. There's got to be more there. You don't enjoy what you've created because your mindset is so much locked on to more, more, more. It's not enough. It's not enough. It's not enough. More, more, more. And, and it, the drive is, is a beautiful thing, right? A lot of people agree that that obsessive tendency is what creates success for most people, but there has to be a point where you say to yourself, wait a second, something's a little bit off here because there, I'm not getting the fulfillment. I'm not feeling the sense of accomplishment. I'm not achieving certain things that I know I could achieve. And a lot of it has to do with that mindset stuff, the beliefs. And I mean, if we want to get a little woo woo, right. We talk about what kind of vibration are you in when you're always pushing instead of kind of going a little bit more with the flow, be, 
that resistance, that internal stuff creates resistance. So what are you, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I, I, I have like a boatload of thoughts for you. <laughs> but first of all, to, just to give you, you were, you were saying woo-woo, right? Up till five years ago, I was sort of like you, you know, um, in that space of I worked hard, but I was beating myself up that I wasn't worthy. I, you know, and, and even like you said, people still from the outside looked at me and saying, holy cow, what is she accomplishing, right? But I didn't feel that reward on the inside. And, and then I had a couple of friends, you know, that was in the yoga and in the crystals and in the love and light. And I was like, yeah, just, I had, do not have any time for any of you, you know, not that sounds very harsh, but for, for that, you know, you're just out there in dreamland. You don't know what it takes to actually do something. Right. And that's when, you know, I know we're going to talk a little bit about the journey, but that's, that there came a time and I'll share that with you in a little bit where I sort of woke up. Right. But also because I need facts. I'm a person that said, you cannot try to pull something over my eyes and think you can just pull that white rabbit out of the hat. I know that rabbit came from somewhere else. Right. And I started understanding your neuroscience and what happens. And for high achievers, you know, we have to go back almost to caveman's time where we all had the flight and fight reaction, right? And when you are a high achiever, you live in that part of your brain. You literally just use half your brain because you are constantly in fight or flight. You know, I got to go get, I got to go get, I got to go get. And the problem about that is, the, the hormonal balance in that it's when you are in that state, it sends your energy, everything that your body has to the extremities, because from, you know, from the anthropal days, you needed to punch the bear or, you know, run the, as fast as you could away from that danger. So our bodies hasn't follow up with that and saying, oh no, there's, there's no bears, there's no lions attacking me. So I don't have to do that. I can keep all my energy in my brain in the, in the more clear, concise, creative, innovative side of my brain, which is at the other half of the brain. So you limit yourself to that drained brain, basically. So if you allow yourself to deep breathe, you know, breathe deeply, decompress with regular intervals and, and do certain things, you are actually able to reroute that neural pathway and start using your full capacity. That's powerful. And I really hope that people picked up on, on that and recognize that that is a very valuable tip that they can start implementing immediately. And, you know, just for the, the sake of transparency, you know, we were on that call earlier today. Yeah. And I, I admitted I'm in that mode right now and I'm not always in that mode, but you know, sometimes we've got things going on. We are, you know, we maybe have a launch or a new product or a new promotion or something. And once you start to get that momentum going, it's like you're running really, 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 really fast. And sometimes you're overextended and you're overbooked and as thrilling as all of those endorphins can be, it, it, you do have to be honest with yourself because at some point you stop being as productive as you could be if you would take the pause, take the breaths, bring yourself back into your center, balance the brain, balance the body, balance your spiritual self, yeah. uh, which makes you so much better. Just not, I mean, as a person, as a business owner, as a mom or dad or whoever, it just makes you a better version of yourself. Absolutely. And what, what I have found is a lot of the clients that I work with, they don't necessarily come from a smooth existence. <laughs> they, there have been some bumps and bruises along the way, small bruises, big bruises, whatever. Um, and that is almost like scar tissue inside of you. And 
we know it, if you go to the extreme of PTSD, I'm not going there. I'm, I'm not a therapist. I'm not a you know trauma therapist by any means, but I know enough to know that PTSD is actually, even if you think you have gone through it, it's leaving, it, it's imprinted in your body. And it's a little bit like that when you are such a high achiever that if you do not listen to your body and recognize those things, there are there, those, you know, those uh, challenges you have overcome or thought you had overcome in the past and connect with them, then you're not able to sort of steer around them when you run into that same behavior again. Right. And, and it's like, and, or then you might go into the overachieving. So you, you were sharing a little bit about your story. For me, like I have, what I work with my client is sort of their natural talent they're going into overdrive or their natural strength. One of my natural strengths as a coach on paper looks like totally amazing. I am compassionate. I'm kind. I am, you know, really um, intently interested in other people. But when that goes into the hyper version of it, I become a pleaser, you know, terrible pleaser. And I get more interested in my clients' results than they do. And it really means that I, I work so hard to make sure I please them so, that, so they feel good. Whereas if I step back and sit, present them and help them get the insight and help them work through those things where I am the outside observer and guide them through that, it is much easier for me. I am still kind to them. I'm still compassionate, but it doesn't drain my energy and it's way more effective. I like that you're talking about how our gifts can actually, if left unchecked, become a challenge or an obstacle for us. Because I think that a lot of times people have this idea that if you have, if you have a gift, if you have a talent, if you have an ability that it, it's just good all around Mm -hmm. good. And we're not saying that it's not, but we have to be mindful of the fact that too much of anything is no longer good. So you always have to find that balance point, that sweet spot. When, when you are talking about your own journey, Mm -hmm. And, and we've, we've talked a little bit about this, about how, you know, it's, it's, we get really good at our craft because we've gone through it, right? It's, it's, you learn from the school of hard knocks. You know? Oh yeah. Oh, so yeah. let's talk a little bit about you and how you overcame some of your own mindset stuff to get to where you are today. So bringing in, starting at the point where you're saying our natural gifts, right? I was born and raised in Denmark. And the year I was born, my parents established a boarding school for ninth and 10th graders. So from the day I was born, I every year had to get to know a whole bunch of new people. So I was lucky. I was born with the ability to be extremely curious in other people. Even though I'm introverted at heart, I am still very curious about the people around me. So that skill was developed and fine-tuned over those years, right? And then, but I was also raised very independently because Let's face it, my parents had 80 other kids that they had to take care of, right? So, and as my career developed and, you know, I started in finance and then all of a sudden I find myself pulling up my tent poles after I met this, you know, handsome American and I I moved 6,000 miles away and I had to readjust my whole career path. And I started working for small um, entrepreneurial companies and manufacturing in different industries and different capacities, you know, anywhere from emptying the garbage can to signing the paychecks. So, you know, the full gamut. Um, Before I opened up my own interior design business that I ran for almost, you know, two decades. And every little step of the way, you were talking about the school of hard knocks, every step of the way, 
there was just a little extra learning, a little extra experience that I now use it every single day in my life. About five years ago, after we had relocated to where we're living now in Scottsdale, Arizona, I thought like always, oh, I'll just start my interior design business again and do all that stuff. But it was a transition in my life for all of what, why I started questioning me. And I, long story short, I came one day to the realization, all the challenge that I had had and I thought I had worked through, I had left the blame on other people. It was never my own fault, even though I, because I could do things, you know. Well, if this wasn't done right, I had to go fix it. Or, you know, if this was not being done, I had to go do it. Or all these things that I started looking and saying, oh, the, the common denominator in all these, these things, who was it? It was me. It wasn't these other people. So I said, okay, so what can I do? How do I take responsibility? And what do I really want? Because up to that point, I hadn't necessarily, even though I had a, thought I had a great plan, I had never really checked in with myself and saying, is this what I envisioned for my life? Is this envisioned for the people that I love? And because I think I mentioned before, if I didn't, I'm doing it now saying I'm a resource, but you know, I, I need the facts, you know, I, I need the proof in the pudding. So I started studying the neuroscience behind why we behave the way we behave. I become master practitioner in a couple of different neuroscience modalities for coaching, life coaching. But it wasn't until six months ago, and I've come a long way, it was until six months ago where I found what would have been hugely beneficial for me. And I can see for my husband, who has been a C-suite for decades, that a modality that takes that thing that we were talking about, your inner strength, your natural abilities, and help you keep them in check. And so even though I have all these um, modalities that I can work with, what I primarily work with with my clients right now is positive intelligence, with, where we work with mental fitness. And where we, so I'm a golfer. I don't know if you play golf. I do, and I'm not very good. No, but... <laughs> You and me both, but I love getting out there. I see the thing is I love being outdoors and at least golf give, gives me sort of an pseudo excuse for being outdoors for three hours without, you know, having a specific plan. But anyway, if you, if you look at the game of golf, right. And, and sports in general, you go, you may go to the pro and you get all the lessons, right. And you stand on the driving range and your ball is just flying. It looks fantastic. And then you go out on the course and then the ball is below you, it's above you, it's in a sand trap, it falls in the water, right? And all of a sudden you're like, I can't remember what the pro said. What's he doing? So what mental fitness and the positive intelligence do is help you build that memory muscle. So when you take that stroke, the ball is still flying exactly where you want it. Even if your coach, your you know, your trainer, whatever is not there by you. And that's what I needed because when I started my journey in per personal development, I really thought that this was for, it was for people who didn't know any better. It's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's so interesting when I even look at my journey over the past decade as a business owner and coming into, you know, into this arena as a, at the time focusing predominantly on hypnotherapy, although also trained in a lot of different modalities. I had a, you know, I was an EFT practitioner before that, and you do a lot of work and you, you achieve a lot. And of course, then I was really into marketing and business development. So I'm learning all these things. I know all kinds of stuff, right? I know the inner game. I know the outer game. And I'm thinking, oh, I got it all together, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to let our, our ego and our pride, which is really just indicating our insecurities, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. <laughs> Letting that slow down the growth and the success that we could have because we, we know it. Oh, yeah. I know, I know so much, right. You know, all that, that, that stuff that's for other people, mm -hmm. right. Who don't have it all figured out. 
<laughs> exactly. But when you start, when you start to make yourself more vulnerable and you, you say to yourself, okay, well, maybe, and this is so true for a lot of my clients too, you know, they're very successful individuals. It can be very, very hard to raise your hand and say, I don't have it all figured out. I don't have it all together. I have this issue that I haven't been able to figure out that I haven't been able to fix. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things that a lot of people struggle with in silence for a very long time and have become really, really, really good at what they think they're hiding it from other people. And they even convince themselves on some level that it's not really an issue for them. But then one day, you know, you do, you have that heart to heart with yourself and you're like, I am the only one standing in my own way. And that's where, you know, someone like yourself or me or, or whoever specializes in these, this understanding of how the mind works, like you have to start to now utilize the way that the mind works to your advantage, because when we're stuck like that, the mind is doing its thing in the way that it does the thing. It's just that, that way that it's doing that thing is not to our advantage. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the thing, one of the things that you sort of touch on too, is the fear factor in this. If I am not this person, who am I? you know, am I no longer the provider? You know, what do I do if I'm not that, you know? So you just keep being that person without, and then slowly you start being disassociated with what you do because you, you get to a point where you don't necessarily recognize that anymore. Um, here in Arizona, of course, we have a very uh, famous residence, uh, Michael Phelps, right? And I remember reading an article where after he had won, I can't remember how many of his medals, like five or six, where he went into a depression. And then he's very open about his depression, right? Because he says, when the Olympics are over, the lights are switched off. You know, the glory is gone. People, yeah, they, he, he is pretty recognizable. But a lot of those Olympic athletes, they're not recognizable outside the arena. And then they're, they're like completely losing who they are. They work so hard for four years for literally that sometimes that 10 seconds of glory. Where an executive, they work like that for years. And so for me, that, that's one of the things in, in that, that when you realize that you're, the cost that you're paying for all of this, right? the hard work, the long hours, maybe the divorce, maybe the disconnection from the kids. Who am I after if this all falls away? It's, it's, it's really powerful. scary. It's, it's a really powerful scary. question. Yeah, it's, it, it, and fear is such an interesting thing. You know, we are so good at justifying things to avoid Oh, our yeah. deepest fears. <laughs> <laughs> that is one trick the mind is really good at. Yeah. But if we're willing to do that hard work and we can break free from that, it is the most liberating thing ever. And there are so many different areas where we have that insidious fear that if we can just let it go, you know, when, when you get to that, that point in your life and you're looking at your life, you should be happy. You should be yeah. happy with what you have. You should be happy with what you're creating. And that's one thing I will give myself credit for. <laughs> Overachiever or not, I absolutely adore my children. Mm -hmm. And so I just allow myself that those blissed out moments with mm -hmm. them and enjoy it so fully. And I do appreciate and practice gratitude for the, the physical things and the emotional things that I uh, have allowed myself to have. But I know that there are a lot of people who really, they don't, they don't even give themselves that. 
They know that they love their family. They know that they love their children. They know that they appreciate their beautiful home or their nice cars or what, you know, the fact that they have a certain amount of money in the bank, but it's almost more of like a cognitive awareness than an emotional connection. Oh, absolutely. And you, there's a couple of things that, that you brought up to that, that gratitude piece, or, you know, I have worked with clients that say, oh, well, I have a gratitude journal or, you know, I'm, I, I do meditation and I'm just like, okay, are you doing that? Or is that just another thing on your agenda that needs to be checked off? You know, the, the day that I heard somebody says meditation is only good if you come out of it differently than you came in. And a lot of people just sit, do their 10 minute meditation, get up and get on with their day. And it has done absolutely, it's literally a waste of time mm -hmm. because they, they're not even contemplating. They're not relaxing. They're not, they're not getting fully in touch with themselves as they sit and meditate. The calculator is going on in the back <laughs> and saying, oh, this took 10 minutes. Now I have to redo, you know, if they're not fully, fully engaged. And then I tell them, then don't do it because then it's almost counterintuitive, like yeah. counter productive. Yeah. yeah, productive. Yeah. <laughs> Found my no, it's, I, I've, I've had that same talk with my clients. Uh, and, and another thing that, that kind of, I think is funny that piggybacks right off of that is the tendency to try to force yourself through things when you're really in a bad mindset. So like, I know with like my hypnosis audios, I will make a disclaimer. If you are really in an off state and it's actually irritating you because that can happen mm -hmm. when you're in a really, really low emotional state, it's like try to be around somebody really positive when you're super pissed off. Yeah. It's annoying, right? Oh, absolutely. You have to raise yourself out of that state before you're going to benefit from it. Be it's counterproductive, like we were just saying, right? To yeah. try to force something that's supposed to be good for you because you're just going through the motions. You know, again, I, I love what, what I'm doing now that it's pulling the metaphors, you know, of, of physical fitness. Because if you go to the gym and you live you know, a lot of weight, you can totally destroy your muscles if you haven't built up that resilience, right? Where smaller weights, a day of rest, smaller weights, day of rest, a little bit bigger weights, day of rest. And people don't realize that it's like, you can't run the marathon the first day out. And that's what a lot of high achievers think that they can. This has been a great conversation. I know we could easily <laughs> go, go deep down so many different avenues. Oh my goodness. Yes. Can you share with our listeners how they can connect with you? Absolutely. So they can, LinkedIn is where I hang out the most. So I am at LinkedIn and I am there on the Elsa Johnson coaching. They can find me there. Um, I have a website more than just fine.com. Or I have a Facebook page and Instagram as well. And of course, please, if you have any questions or want to talk further about it, they can email me at elsa at more than just fine.com. This has been a wonderful conversation. Thank you so much, Elsa, for sharing your wisdom and your tips and your incredible energy. Oh, thank you. It's been my delight and pleasure to be here. <laughs> and of course, I want to thank all of our listeners. If you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you do so. You don't want to miss any of these incredible guests that we have on. And until next time, we will see you in the next episode.